Oh no! Jaffro, this looks complicated. Yeah, well it's not that bad. These are really easy to read. I got a box of micrometers here. This is a zero to one inch, one to two inch, and two to three inch. They're graduated in thousandths. Some of you have used these before and know how they work. Some of you don't. I'm going to take a minute to go over them. This is the most important piece in any build. You need a reference point to make sure all of your measurements are accurate. This one happens to be machined to a precision two inches. And you want to take care of these and don't drop them. You're going to reference these a lot if you build engines. So anyway, um, what this thing does, it's got different graduations here on the main shaft. It's graduated with the big numbers in tenths of an inch. And that's uh, tenths of an inch between two and three inches. And then you have these little marks here, which uh, each one of these is 25 thousandths of an inch. That would be zeroed. As you rotate it, those are thousandths of an inch. So the graduation is in think in tenths and in thousandths of an inch. Each one of these lines you pass is 25 thousandths. So that's each time you rotate it all the way around until it passes zero. So four revolutions is a tenth of an inch. There you go. Very simple. Okay, 25, 50, 75 thousandths. So if you're measuring something between this, it's already given that it's between two and three inches. This measurement here would be 2.100. So that's how that works. Now, what you want to do is make sure that your tools are accurate. There's going to be numbers thrown around. Try to see if you can figure, follow along because if you do, at the end of this, you're going to know how to make sure your measurements are correct. What you do with these micrometers when you're taking a measurement is you turn this until the piece on the end ratchets. That applies a very specific amount of torque that, uh, that zeroes it to as close as it's going to get. Now I've got the two inch reference point in here and you'll see that it lines up on that uh, half a thousandth mark right there. So these apparently are accurate to 0.0005, so four places. Or that's, where, that's how far it's off. And it's important that when you f discover this, you write it down, 0 0.0005. There we go. And that's for my micrometers. All right, I just did the cardinal sin and I dropped it. So, anywho, after you have that measurement, there are a couple of other tools that you're going to wind up using in this process, and uh, I'd like to take a minute to illustrate which one those are. But let's start with this. You've seen me use these in other videos. These are no surprise. You turn the thing on, it digitally reads out what the measurement is. I'm going to make sure it's closed all the way. Open and close and zero it. At this point right now, if I want to see how accurate this is, I would open it up and clamp down on this reference. And it looks like I've got 19995. 19995. Welcome to A A A A A A A A A. So, these are off by point oh 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 writing sideways. So we have a given and a known. In order to measure bores we use a totally different device. This is a Steph's B&B &B dial bore gauge. This is a great, great tool. Anybody who's building an engine really needs to have one of these in their toolbox. Uh, or anybody who's a machinist. If you have a good machinist, they're going to have one of these in their shop. and They're going to base their measurements off of it and they're going to know how to calibrate it. But if you want to see what's involved with getting an engine checked out, follow along with these videos. You're going to have a blast. You'll notice that this is for internal use. I find the sticker to be hilarious because normally you see that on a different kind of product. But uh, it's actually correct. You don't want to use this anywhere but on your internals. What this allows you to do is to measure the inside bores of bearings, uh, cylinder walls, and things like that quickly and accurately to as close as a ten thousandth of an inch. 
you see this tool has graduated the little lines are ten thousandths all the way around the face the big numbers are, are uh, thousandths of an inch and we've got this little gauge right up here that's hundredths of an inch and you'll see that it's graduated from no hundredths to five hundredths and so each time this gauge makes it around one time each time the needle sweeps is one hundredth of an inch and this gauge will count up and you'll see the way that works the tool that you're going to be working with you use guides set up to the tenth of the inch so that this is within its operating range so you actually have to set the tool up to be slightly larger than the bore that's where things start to get complicated because in this case you would need to take your measurement and subtract it from whatever you have set up as the tool width what you have to do here is you put the gauge inside the handle of the, of the bore gauge and you press the thing up until the needle pops up to the upright position and the reason why you want to get it up there is because that's what lines up the uh, hundredths mark to make it easier to read once you've got it up there you can just uh, rotate the gauge face you see that rotates so you can set an, a zero point more accurately and that's nailed right there there's the 3.2 inch guide and I'm going to add the ten hundredths and the five hundredths spacers to it we stick that here on the end and lock it down with a collar. Now what we have here is a piece that is supposed to be 3.35 inches. Well what I was telling you before about finding zero points, uh, your tools are only as accurate as your least accurate tool. Well, we referenced out the micrometers, but I don't have one big enough to do a DSM bore. But I want to measure the outside size of these probes at its zero point. And you see when I squeeze that, it moves it so I can't squeeze it very hard. And see how big it is. So we start by turning on the calibers. They're zeroed. We crank it open to roughly the size we need. It's going to be 3.3 something. And then we just clamp it in there. Once we've got it on both pieces. And we get our measurement. Looks like I've got 3.37 inches on this tool. 3.370. And I'll scrutinize this and be a little bit more careful just to make sure with both hands. Yep, 3.370. Alright, now with that as a reference, I know that that's larger than the DSM bore, which is supposed to be 3.346. Stock bore. With the gauge set up and our zero point known, we can take this over to the block and see how much we need to subtract from the inside measurement of 3.37. Now, the unique thing about this versus using telescoping gauges and taking the measurements is that it has the spring loaded guide that retracts far enough for this to make contact inside the bore. As these two pieces get squeezed together, the dial moves. So this keeps it really well lined up into its widest point. You still want to take several measurements anyway. But the way you get your measurement is you stick this down into the block and after you've got it in the position where you want to measure, you pull the tool towards you and it begins to compress the needle. And you see we've gone around one time, two times, and now I'm, I'm not centered in the bore. Let's get it centered. One time, two times, and it looks like we've got point zero two three three point zero two three three we got two three two that time two three one you see how this works you take several measurements and you take your average two three two three one two three one two three one we need to subtract 0.0231 and what we get 3.3469 remember our digital calipers being off by 0 0.005 so we have to add half to that we've got 74 here so there's a little bit of wear looks like it's worn 14 thousandths of an inch
that's about as accurate as you can get this thing without lasers and equipment that I just absolutely can't afford. But uh, if you're lucky, you can find a dial bore gauge inexpensively. It'll really help with your build because you can take all the measurements necessary at multiple angles to make sure cylinders aren't egg-shaped, to make sure that your bores are straight, to make sure all of your bearings are in spec. And uh, I'm going to continue using this through the rest of these videos. I'm going to wind up converting over to the digital indicator as soon as I get a chance to do the bores and to show you guys how that works. But uh, stay tuned.